be here and then I'll take off. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. Go, you talk to him. Tell him we can give him a lift as well. I've got some spare shit if you want anything. Rangefinders? No, we're all good, man. We're, we're oh, pretty geared up. Oh, thanks, dude. Did you need a lift? I thought you were just going sh to shoot me in the face, so I was like, fuck. No, that's boring. Thanks. <laughs> what did you say? You want a lift? Yeah, dude. No, I'm good. Okay, awesome. The first minute or so of this video was me and Savman just helping someone for fun, taking the risk to fly over and blood bag them, just trust them, before deciding to fly somewhere and shoot someone senselessly. But moving on, this video is going to be a rant about leveling and skills and that sort of thing. There is a visceral reward we feel for learning new skills. It doesn't matter what the skill is. Could be painting, music, martial arts, fucking carpentry or whatever. Um, or when we become stronger, more agile, faster through training and practice. Where we've evolved and we're designed to feel good when we achieve something, when we get better at something. So it's something that's always been in us in humans. But it's not easy to simulate this in games, to simulate uh, the learning of skills in a lot of games. So some games try to emulate it by asking us to perform these monotonous tasks which might not require any actual skill. Um, and it records a, a it records a skill level as a statistic somehow regardless of how monotonous it is it still gives it gives us this feeling of accomplishment when we get to it to the next level when we level up a character even though we might have learnt nothing perhaps never had any actual challenge and there was no risk of failure in the process um, it drives us to keep on pressing buttons the real world equivalent might be something like running on a treadmill or doing uh, bench press reps you know, over and over to get over and over to get stronger. Except in a game, you're not actually getting fitter or stronger. You're just increasing a number stored in the memory of a computer. You don't even really get better at the game that you're playing because it's not a skill you're developing. You know, as a person, as a player, it's a number attached to a character in the game. And uh. You know, we keep, we keep doing it because it works, because it hijacks that natural reward system I was talking about. That's why game developers do it. It keeps people playing, uh, paying their subscription fee, even when there's nothing new to learn. No new content, nothing else to see, or do or be challenged by. That's what they call grinding. And uh, it was sort of a... It was a derogatory term a few years ago, but it's sort of become like this expected um, component of a lot of, of, a lot of uh, RPGs that the games we used to play, they didn't have, they might have had some kind of grinding, but it was nothing like it is now. Like I said, it's, uh, they try to keep us in the game to pay subscription fees, keep us playing and so on. Before you'd level up a character a bit and then eventually, like pretty soon in a few hours you'd finish the game. Um, so it wasn't this just endless hours and hours and you know thousands of hours of um, grinding. It was for a specific task. It was for an end in the game. And uh, you know nowadays I'm I'm not very motivated at all to play games that ask you to grind for skills, especially uh, MMOs, massively multiplayer online games, RPGs. It's it's a really common gaming convention now and, so, and it's something that Dean Hall rejected 
when he's designing DayZ. And it's another reason that he called it the anti-game. It's another convention yeah, that he dropped. Um, but I'm not, like, I'm not totally against it, and I still play some games with leveling, but I won't play um, like World of Warcraft. It's just, it just seems like such a waste of time um, to spend not seeing anything new, not really getting better at something. Um, but for example, Castlevania Symphony of, the, Symphony of the Night is considered one of the best uh, 2D games ever. And it's a beautiful game, it's very well designed. Uh, I really did enjoy playing it. One thing that did bother me though um, with the RPG elements was that when I came back to monsters I couldn't beat before and you know smash them because I had a higher level, I didn't find it that rewarding because I hadn't, I didn't change anything, I didn't change my strategy uh, the way I played at all, all I did was um, spend the time to do a bit of grinding and level up my character. The best part was the exploration, the maze, um, even seeing the new artwork of the monsters, the different designs and different rooms. Uh, there was a bit of problem solving and, and memory related stuff that you had to do to get through the game and that was what I found the most interesting. But in general now for me leveling up to defeat something after after a bit of a grind really it, it doesn't get me off I'm sorry it just doesn't work for me anymore. In terms of an MMO it can also help even the playing field because how well you perform roughly depends on how much time you put in rather than the more kind of natural uh, situation that, that develops uh, you know when you have a small number of sk very skillful players dominating everyone else so you can avoid uh, creating really challenging tasks which might end in failure for a lot of people by just asking them all to perform a large number of relatively easy and repetitive tasks so that keeps most people happy not feeling inadequate not feeling like they're getting their ass kicked all the time they just put more time in because most people don't want to be just another another number another mid to low level player getting smashed um, you know we all sort of expect to be some kind of Rambo type character the hero of the movie sometimes though it is nice to just zone out and grind in a game I can appreciate that uh, and I don't blame people for playing them but that's not what DayZ is supposed to be. It's supposed to be horribly unfair, unforgiving, unscripted, unpredictable, sometimes unplayable. <laughs> sometimes unplayable. In DayZ I want to see actual player skill, knowledge, decision making and so on, um, determine how successful they are at the game. At the same time, even when someone is really, really skilled in DayZ, really good, know what they're doing, they'll still have run into some bad luck, you know, run into a clan of seven people, <laughs> fall off a building, get caught out by a Mike Tyson zombie or something, um, and, they, and they still die anyway. So that disappointment when you die, even though you did everything right, is honestly a breath of fresh air to me, to have in a game. I think it's one of the things that... Um, and, and another reason to call it the anti-game. And... It's so surprising how a game can be that successful when it um, supposedly doesn't do it does everything wrong. So some people might uh, think of it, think of DayZ as having a lot of grinding elements as well, since you have to. Sometimes you need to do it if you want to get across the other side of the map. You have to run a long way, or have to do a lot of searching for loot. But I really disagree with that. I don't think it meets the definition of grinding at all. And so, but some new mods have introduced a trading system which changes that a lot. It shifts the focus of the game entirely onto gear, money and trading in with NPCs and that does make it very grindy. Another reason I don't like seeing that in the game. The only positive side of some kind of skill levelling I can see is that it might make people value the life of their character more rather than the gear that they're holding. 
Oh, he's on the roof. Maybe one way to do that is rather than um, what I would an idea I'd, I would suggest is that rather than having stats which increase your character performance in some way, just record more stats about the life of the character, sort of much like the journal is doing already. But record more information, even uh, down to how many things they've eaten, how many bullet holes they've survived. What, uh, what, the, what sort of sicknesses they've had, um, how they fixed it, their current you know, physical status. It could even record details about uh, anyone that you might have killed, not just the fact that they're a survivor or a bandit, but things like where they were when you killed them, um, how long that character had been alive, how armed they were. So then maybe someone who has 20 fresh spawn kills because they've been sniping on the coast with DMR, maybe that, that wouldn't look so impressive because you'd see that the average length of life of, of the people they'd killed was very, very short and they never had many um, items on them. And uh, perhaps could, there could be a feature which exports this information, the journal, as a PDF or even a script, some kind of script. Um, so that the data can be shared or even it, it might update a website automatically based on server data then you could share it socially and uh, your character's life might have far more value so then you wouldn't have to resort to leveling the character at all if you think of gear as the leveling system in DayZ like many people do then what uh, that means what, that, what happens on most servers today is that Practically everyone reaches the sort of maximum character level without much trouble at all. And they have tools like range finders, night vision, sniper rifles, ghillie suits, whatever. Um, and that's the servers kind of being designed to level the playing field as quickly as possible. And this uh, higher end gear removes the need for a lot of the skills uh, it takes to survive in the game. Um, like uh, sniping, rangefinders completely um, uh, remove pretty much everything. It just makes it a point and click kind of um, experience. In the sh in the footage I'm showing here, you'll see me using rangefinders to get a couple of kills from about 700 meters, and one from almost a kilometer. Rangefinders turn, like I said, it turns it into a a point and click affair. All you have to do to get headshots from the maximum range of your weapon is find the range, zero to the nearest 100 meters, then move your character exactly to the range that you've zeroed for. For the example in the video, it's you know about 700 meters. You just walk to that range. How this problem with um, high-level gear will be solved in the standalone is that there will be a finite number of items across all servers. So rather than removing something like rangefinders, which I wouldn't mind, but it doesn't have to happen, you could create a really interesting situation where, say, about one percent of people have them or less. And you know, imagine how you'd feel if you were probably, if you knew you were probably the only person on the server with them, and how nervous you'd be about losing them. Um, of course, you'd have this massive advantage over other players if you can actually find a sniper rifle. That is. Uh, th and that's unfair, and that's how it should be. Uh, you might even die without ever having found a sniper rifle, um, so you never got to use the rangefinders properly. Because uh, you know everything else would be rare as well. Uh, a sniper rifle will will be rare. And um, everyone else doesn't have this issue of run of getting killed at every turn by all these other extremely geared players because these extremely geared people will be rare as well but you'll run into them from time to time and uh, I think that you know that's how um, the, the dynamic should work as much as possible I'd like to see players apply actual skills rather than statistics they've gained through grinding for example you navigate with a compass a map using the stars and landmarks rather than any kind of gamey heads-up display. Uh, you might know the range to your target because you had to calculate it using mil dots, 
or you've experimented by firing and watching where the dust kicks up. You might apply deeper medical knowledge to treat wounds and illness better than most other players and that might be your advantage. Uh, perhaps a medical student should um, be far better at healing and uh, treating things than other people. I think that would be really interesting. That part of the game could, game could be extremely deep um, and sort of out of reach of most people. Uh, animal hunting should be far more difficult. I've done a fair bit of, well, I've done a bit of hunting, and uh, I could suggest a lot of things that, that could make a big difference. I think um, I won't bother doing that here. But more than anything else, uh, Day Z is about the the experience and the stresses and how you feel and how you solve problems, how you deal with different situations. Um, all this talk of leveling, it's kind of having any kind of leveling system is sort of beside the point um, the only one I'd suggest though to be put in the game um, was the example I gave of recording uh, more statistics about your character and what they've been doing rather than some kind of leveling which improves your character's abilities and capabilities so I might leave it there and remember to subscribe because I'll be making a lot more videos thanks